So welcome to the Java user group event from tonight. Um, Henrik will talk about Adopt OpenJDK making Java free again. So it's just like the next session we hold after the summer break. So you probably saw that nothing was um, planned for July, but now actually in August, we have already um, three events planned and coming more even online um, like this autumn. So as you know, um, we are doing this um, event format in Big Marker and the platform you're using right now, but the sessions will be also recorded um, and also then published to YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon. I always wanted to say this like a, a professional YouTube streamer <laughs> and um, you get notified instantly when the video is available. So it's not just not, it's not um, just after the, the the talk, but it will take us a few days to do like um, a proper editing of the video. As you also know, there is actually a um, Chuck Switzerland Slack channel. So use our inviter link as you see below uh, slack.chuck.ch, and we can continue the conversation after the talk there, or maybe like even during the time till the next event. Um, we are happy if you would provide feedback to us. As you know, like in our um, regular Java user group events, we always have a feedback form. This one is now even online. And if you provide us feedback at the end of the talk, um, you will have the possibility to win a one year license from IntelliJ. So we just do like um, a raffle every month and from the participants who submitted um, the feedback forms. So you don't have to wait till the end to actually fill out the form. As soon as you leave actually um, this event, you will be forwarded immediately to the feedback form. Then a few more things to get familiar with the platform if you haven't joined um, these events like in the um, last few months, um, the, the stream has a delay of 15 seconds. So that means actually when we are talking and so for example, announcing that we are doing a poll or something like this, um, it takes about 15 minutes, uh, 15 seconds, obviously. And um, so please bear with us when we are maybe too fast or so, and you don't just see it immediately. So this is just a challenge we have all the time. Um, in Big Marker, we have different tabs you can choose. So the chat is very important um, when you have questions about, for example, audio is an issue or something like this. Please use the chat to communicate um, with Marcus, who is supporting you as well with the technical problems, but also if you want to talk to other participants. Then actually there is a Q&A section. Please use that if you have a question for Hendrik because we will monitor that and if it makes sense, I will ask him the question directly and disturb him during the talk. But also we will actually finalize the list with the questions at the end of his presentation. And the other thing will be polls. So um, Hendrik will fire some polls and will ask you a few questions. And obviously you can answer them. And in the poll section, you will also see the results, like what the others um, voted. Yeah. And this is our Hendrik speaker of tonight, and I'm sure he will introduce himself. So I just copied the text from the website and We'll actually let him introduce himself because I think he can do that better than I. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you. So let me give me a second before I introduce myself to to get my slides up and running. Um, I hope this works. Let's see. Okay, this works. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, a warm welcome from me too. To, to the talk, Adopt OpenJDK, 
making uh, Java free again. This is a, a talk that, uh, yeah, since some week uh, weeks, I and George Adams from from Microsoft um, do as as online session at several Java user groups at at conferences. Sadly, I'm alone today. George cannot join me based on some very important uh, private or a very important private appointment that happens just a day ago so he's not able to join um but yeah i i think maybe there are some points where i'm not 100 percent sure about things um but we will see i think in general i can give a quite good overview about adopt open jdk Okay, so um, let me introduce myself. I'm I'm Hendrik. I'm um, a co-founder of the company Karakun. You might know Karakun as the Karakun AG, which is um, located in in Basel. Um, I'm not working in Basel. I, I live in in Dortmund in Germany, and I'm the lead of the Karakun office in um, Dortmund, which is the German office of Karakun. And um, yeah, as, as co-founder and member of Karakun, I'm doing a lot of Java-related things in my daily work. I'm helping customers in um, Java architecture topics, doing consultancy about Java, about yeah, Java expert questions, about um, legal questions, about OpenJDK and, and Java distributions in general. And um, Next to, to this um, yeah, customer project that I do at Karakun, I do a lot of um, work that is related or based in the Java ecosystem and in, in the open source area. So one example is that I was part of two JSR expert groups. Um, here is one example that you might know the Java Bean Validation um, expert group that specified the Java Bean Validation API where I was part of. And next to this, I did a lot of um, online sessions and, and talks around the world. And, and based on this, I received the Java One Rockstar Award two times and became a Java champion some years ago. And um, since last year, I'm part of the technical steering committee of Adopt OpenJDK and um, therefore um, taking care about the roadmap and the technology and the future of this project. As I said, normally I would do this session together with um, George Adams, who's the Java program manager at Microsoft and one of the co-founder of Adopt Open JDK and uh, chairman of the TSC at Adopt Open JDK. And as you can see, a lot of more things. He's not even related to Java. He's a 100% open source guy and, and do a lot open source stuff in um, committees in the uh, Java and JavaScript ecosystem. Um, but yeah, today he's not here, so um, I will do the talk on my own. And um, let's have a look about the content of today. So where I want to talk about today is, first of all, some terminology. I want to have a look at what is exactly the adopt open JDK? What is the Java distribution? What is the open JDK? Things like that. Then I will give an introduction to some open JDK workflows to, to have a better understanding of the um, open source work in the open JDK and how Java versions and uh, Java LTS versions has been created um, in the open JDK and, and will be created in future. Next to this, we will have a look at, at different distributions and vendors of um, open JDK based distributions. And last but not least, we will have a deeper look at one specific vendor, which is adopt open JDK. And here we will have a short look at the history of this uh, community project. Then uh, we will talk about about we will talk about a topic that most of you might have heard that Adopt Open JDK will become a top level project in the Eclipse Foundation, um, which then will be renamed to Eclipse Adoptium. And I will give some information about um, the builds of Adopt Open JDK, so how we build Java binaries and Java distributions, 
how we test those Java distributions to provide enterprise ready binaries. And at the end, I will give an overview of the roadmap. So on things that will come in the future and some other tools and, and services we are currently working on. Okay, so um, let's start with the terminology. Um, terminology. So three things that I would like to, to cover here because this is um, often based on, from my point of view, not that good um, um, reporting and, and not that good marketing from, for example, Oracle used in a quite bad and wrong way, which is the Open JDK. Um, the Open JDK um, is the um, place where the open sources or the sources of Java are found in open source repositories and where roles, for example, for, for authors and things like that are defined. What the open JDK is not is a Java binary. So you never, for example, download an open JDK. If you download open JDK, you maybe download sources from a repository, but you never download a Java binary. The open JDK are the sources. When you, for example, on a Linux server, on an Ubuntu or an um, SUSE, install OpenJDK, this is because they use the name not quite good. Because what you are downloading there is an OpenJDK binary or an OpenJDK build that is provided by the Linux provider, in that case, Ubuntu. And this is normally called OpenJDK binary. So what You've downloaded from, yeah, for example, Oracle for Java 6, 7, 8, for several years is an open JDK binary. And Oracle in that case is an open JDK provider. And since some time, maybe the last two years or so, a lot of additional open JDK binaries and open JDK providers um, has been popped up on the market. An example is Amazon Coretto, where Amazon is the OpenJDK provider and, and Coretto is the OpenJDK binary. That is like the Oracle OpenJDK or the Oracle JDK based on the sources that are part of the OpenJDK. Okay, this is about the terminology. Um, so why is this important? Because now we want to have a look at some workflows in the OpenJDK and some workflows at Java providers. And to better understand this, I, I think knowing these terms is, yeah, is really helpful. So what we see is something that you might have seen several times the last two years in, yeah, maybe different kind of views. Um, this is the new roadmap of Java. To be more specific, what we see here is not a general roadmap of Java, but what we see here is the roadmap of the Oracle JDK which means like the roadmap of the Java binaries that you can download at the Oracle website, where you have, if you are a Mac or a Windows user, have downloaded Java 6, Java 7, Java 8 since years. Um, so one general thing that happened for Java is that um, the release train in general has changed. Um, up to Java 8, all Java versions stayed for a long time. Whenever a new Java version came up, it came up based on its features, which means like for Java 6 or Java 8, it was decided what features this version should contain. And once all these features were completed, the release or the version has been released. Starting with Java 9, this totally switched. Now we have a time-based release model, which means that Every six months, a new version of Java will be released and a feature will be part of the next version that will be released after the feature has been done. So you cannot say in what version a feature will be part of, but you can exactly say when, for example, Java 21 will be released. Um, this is the same for all Java versions because this happens in the Open JDK. Um, differences are in, in the license and in the availability of the versions and 
in the terms how you can use this um, version. So up to Java 8, you don't have a problem, right? You went to Oracle, downloaded Java, and just used it. Java is open source, that's cool, you can use it, done. Um, yes, Java is open source, but this do not mean that the Oracle binaries that you download are free to use too. For versions up to Java 8, that was the case, they were just free to use. Um, but starting with um, Java 11 and with Java 8 update 200 something, I don't know, um, that was released in April 2019, um, Oracle has changed their license. And based on this, the um, Oracle JDK that you can still download at Oracle can still be used on your local machine to learn Java, to play with it, to maybe code something, but it's forbidden to use for commercial use, which means like it's forbidden to use it on a server, it's, it's forbidden to use it in production. If you want to use the Oracle JDK in production, you need a contract with Oracle, which can be, for example, like, or in general, it is it, that you have a contract for an LTS version for commercial support of Java at Oracle. And next to this, you might heard about um, Java LTS versions like Java 11, or the next one will be Java 17, that are defined as LTS versions and are defined as, okay, this these versions will stay for a long time. This was what... Um, Oracle, first of all, told all the people. What they have not told is that for the Oracle JDK, this ATS versions are only available for commercial use if you have um, a support contract with Oracle. If you do not have a support contract with Oracle, it's no ATS for you. I mean, starting with Java 11, you don't care because you can even the non ATS version for six months, you are not able to use it at all. Um, so this is a release train um, for Oracle. Maybe some of you have already seen this general slide without any colors, so without the definition, what is free, what is commercial, um, and so on, and might be shocked now based on what I've said. Um, don't be shocked because um, thankfully it's much better than it's shown here. This is only for the Oracle JDK, which means like the open JDK binaries or the Java binaries that you can download at Oracle. Um, yeah, um, just see a question. I will um, answer that later. I have slides about that. Um, but before going to the next slide, I would like to start a poll because what we are seeing here are different Java versions, 8, 10, 11, and so on. And I ask myself, what Java versions are you currently using in your project? So I prepared a poll um, where you can yeah, just answer what versions of Java you are using. Yeah. Um, so while the poll is running, I can, um, or the poll is it, yeah, it's still open. I can give an answer to, to the question that what, uh, what asked by, by Oliver. Um, so he put in a link jdk.java.net 14 and he, um, said wondering why it states that Oracle builds can be downloaded at the Oracle technology network at oracle.com. So that's like this. Um, so what we see here on the current slide is the release trend for the Oracle JDK. Um, when you come from the old Java world, this is confusion. But it's even get more confused, or you will get more confused if, we, if you know that Oracle now has two different JDKs. Because Oracle does not only provide the Oracle JDK, Oracle next to this Oracle um, 
provide the Oracle Open JDK builds. Um, the Oracle Open JDK builds are JDK builds based on the Open JDK. Um, you can download them on jdk.java.net. But there are some problems with that build. Um, first of all, all these builds just stay for six months. After six months, they are gone. And maybe there's an archive, I don't know. But they never get updates. So even, even Java 11 or, or Java 17, which will be the next um, LTS version of Java, won't get any, any updates after six months. Um, next to this, these are vanilla builds quite raw builds. What does it mean? It means that under Windows and so on, you don't get an installer or something like that. You just have a zip file that you need to unpack on your own, um, set up Java Home and your own, and so on and so on. Um, so, and the link that you had um, is the link of the um, Java 14 Open JDK build. And um, this one links to um, the Oracle Technology Network at Oracle.com, and there you download the Oracle JDK builds. Well, it's, as I said, it's, it's a little bit tricky what, what Oracle did here, but um, we don't care much about Oracle anymore in this presentation. Um, so if, if there are additional questions for, for Oracle, uh, I, I will answer them for sure. Um, but maybe let's first of all continue um, with the um, session. So I, I assume most of you have um, done the poll, so I will uh, just close it now. It looks, from my point of view, quite good. We have um, a lot of people that use Java 11 and even a lot of people that use Java 11 Plus, which means like a version newer than Java 11, which 20% I've never seen something like that. Um, I would like to, to discuss with those people later if they really use it in production, if they only have small microservices, or if they use it next to Java 11, for example, just to do unit tests and be prepared on the next Java version, on the next LTS version, something we will discuss later, um, scenarios that you can, can use to make a jump to a new LTS version easy. But anyway, so let's um, close the poll and um, continue or go back to the slides and I hope you now can still see um, the slide since I closed the poll. Um, so, as already mentioned, um, in the last year, a lot of new um, OpenJDK vendors popped up. Uh, I already mentioned Amazon, uh, Coretto, but there are more like Azure, Zuru, Bellsoft, Liberica, several Linux distributions I already mentioned. Red Hat has their own Java distribution. SAP has its own. Alibaba has a custom Java distribution, and so on and so on and so on. Um, mostly all of them are provided by by a commercial vendor like like Amazon, like Azure, like Bellsoft. Um, the one that is different is Adopt Open JDK. I mean, you see commercial companies behind it like IBM, like Microsoft. Okay. But um, Adopt Open JDK, as we will see later, um, is sponsored by these companies, but not driven by these companies. Um, so it's at the end a 100% community based um, project. Um, so several years ago, you downloaded Java 7, Java 6 from Oracle, you coded your Java application and just executed it on your local machine. And then you deployed it to the server, where maybe a Windows server, where again, a Java that someone downloaded from Oracle was deployed and that was used to execute the application. And you normally had no concerns about doing this because I mean, what should happen? It's the same Java one time, the same that you had installed on your machine that will work perfectly. Now we have several Java vendors that provide Java runtimes like Amazon Coretto, Azure Zulu, Base of Liberica. So are they same? Do, are there a difference between those Java runtimes? Can I easily create a Java application on my local machine on Amazon Coretto and then deploy it on a server where uh, Azure Zulu, for example, is used as a runtime? From my point of view, that's a quite good question. And um, 
some time ago, like one or, or two years ago, that was a question um, that a lot of people asked um, where um, we as a Java champions, for example, as a group um, provided a, an open document that was hosted at, at Medium that answered a lot of questions in this area because a lot of people were concerned about um, all these things that happened the last years based on the new release train and the new licenses. And I can totally understand it. Next to this, a lot of rumors um, just showed up, like you need to pay for Java, whatever you want to have. You definitely need to pay for Java. There is no LTS in Java and so on and so on. And um, while maybe two years ago, some of the points were totally valid and there were a lot of problems and a lot of question marks in the rooms where no one had a good answer for. It looks much, much better today. And I will give you an, an introduction, um, what happened in, in the meantime and why today I'm more than happy that I can say Java is free. You do not need to pay for Java. You do not need to pay for LTS versions for Java. And this do not only mean for adopt OpenJDK, but for other OpenJDK based distributions too. I mean, there are some where you need to pay for, we will have a look at that, but in general, we are on a very, very good way. So let's have a look why. Um, what we see here is a very simplified workflow of the adopt OpenJDK. So think about having a Git repository and this Git repository contains Java. And all our Java releases like Java 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on are branches. Um, so when developing Java, we have two different types of things we add to the code of the OpenJDK. First of all, we add new features. Maybe the, the bubble on the left, yeah, before we create the Java 8 branch is the uh, language feature of Lambdas because Lambdas was there starting with Java 8. Maybe this is the commit of the Lambda feature. I hope that has not been done in just one commit, but yeah, I think you understand what I mean. And next to new features, um, we have security fixes. So whenever someone finds a violation issue, something like that in Java, it needs to be fixed. So these are the red bubbles. So we have two different types of, of commits or of things that come into the base of Java. And then from time of time, we create a new branch out of this master, which is the new, a new major version of Java, like shown in this example, Java 8. Um, and such branch is now maintained for some time. For Java 6, 7, and 8, this time was quite long, like several years where this one was maintained. And maintaining such branch meant that all the security fixes that have been done in the master um, must be merged into the branch. Um, when talking about merging here from time to time, it's not that easy because you can assume on the master maybe um, the security fixes are already used new language features like lambdas or like records now. And um, so you need to, to re-implement them. Okay, so um, just one second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, it's so hot, so I can't stay in my office. I'm in the living room. And <laughs> so people need to go through this room from time to time. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's, let's continue here. Um, yeah, as I said, um, this is how, for example, Java 8 has been done. As I said, this is a, yeah, a simplification of, of the real workflow to make it clear and understandable. Okay, and so at some point in the OpenJDK, the support of a version has been stopped, like it happened for Java 6, for example. So there was a point in the past where it was not able at the Oracle website to receive a new updated Java 6 binary, but you were still able to buy commercial support for Java 6 and buy based on a commercial support contract that you pay, updates for Java 6. 
And this happens um, based, based on a workflow where vendors that provide commercial support for Java clone, fork, copy, however you will name it, um, the version branch or the version repository and um, continue to work on this version on their own in a closed repository that is not open source anymore because it's a closed repository inside this company. And this not only has been done by Oracle, there are other companies who, who work like this. For, for example, Azul provides already uh, commercial support for Java since some time. And, and this is the same workflow that they have. So what does it mean? Let's assume Java 9 comes up, uh, we have a new security fix and as said, this must become part of Java 9. And what these companies now do is um, they migrate or, or cherry pick um, those security fixes and put them into their versions too. Um, we have seen, or as I already said, often it's not just cherry picking merchant, merging, often um, those security fixes are quite complex and you really need to, to re-implement things. And when I'm talking about quite complex things that need to be re-implemented because you cannot simply copy them. And we see now we have three closed branches here. I think you can assume what might happen, right? So this can end in Java versions that behave differently. And this is not only because of the security fixes, because if you're a company and you get paid for, for doing something like this, you can even get more money if you do some individual fixes for customers, which is quite okay. So a customer pays you, for example, time and material. If you add a specific fix or a specific new feature, maybe something that happened in Swing, but was not defined as a security fix and therefore not um, automatically merged into the commercial ATS branch. Um, the company get paid to, to menu or to merge this into its vendor branch. And based on this, um, those versions can, yeah, definitely look different between or have difference between each other. Next to this, based on this concept, we have run program. Um, for Java 8, there is no open ATS. So all ATS for Java 8 now happens in closed branches. And two years ago, this was a state that, that we had. And there was a discussion, what, what should, um, yeah, what how the future of, of Java and ATS Java should look like. There must be, a, we need to find a solution to, to have free ATS versions and so on, because this can't be the solution. Happily, there is a solution today, and this solution is based on one customer, or mainly on one customer, uh, not customer, vendor, and, and this is Red Hat, because Red Hat um, did something special. They did not create their own private repository for LTS. Um, they continue to work in the open, in the open JDK repositories, which means that Red Hat merges all the security fixes that happens in the, in future versions, in the, let's call it master, into the Java 8 and Java 11 branch of open JDK. And based on this, the open source version of Java, the open JDK has Java 8 and Java 11 branches that are maintained and will be maintained in future based on Red Hat. Happily, some other companies too. I can give you another example, the company Bellsoft, for example, which is another vendor. They have a, a private fork, but in their contracts, they say that everything they do in their private fork, they will um, migrate back to the OpenJ, OpenJDK if it's not already happened. Um, so happily, happily, a lot of or some companies provide a way so that we can say that the open source project, open JDK has branches that can be used to build LTS versions of Java. And um, based on this, when having a look at the release train, the release train from open JDK looks different to the one from, from Oracle 
because um, thanks to companies, for example, like Red Hat, we can say that for Java 8 and Java 11, we now have open source free LTS versions of Java. When talking about Java versions, I'm currently not talking about binaries because as said, OpenJDK is just the source. I can give you a spoiler. We at Adopt OpenJDK, for example, use the sources to, to build the Adopt OpenJDK binaries. And, and based on this, we at Adopt can provide um, LTS versions of Java. Having Red Hat as one of the main sponsors um, um, from Adopt OpenJDK and having one person of Red Hat in the steering committee um, helps to, to get this running and uh, so that we can plan for the future and already today discuss how it will be handled with Java 17, which is the, or will be the next ATS version of Java. Um, yeah, and based on this now in theory, everyone can um, build their LTS versions of um, Java. Um, so um, some slides ago, um, someone asked a question. I don't know who, who oh yeah, it was Laurin who asked, uh, what does Oracle add to the JDK to make it so special? Um, that's a quite good question um, because Oracle is doing things here or especially did things in the past. So when having a look at the Oracle JDK against the vanilla open JDK build, um, we can see that as any other JDK that you can download, the, the Oracle JDK is based on the open JDK sources. Um, so Oracle takes the open JDK sources, compile it to build a JDK. But what Oracle does is, or has been done, for example, for Java 8, based on this binaries or on this bundle that they built, they put additional tools. Let, let, let's say like they put a little bit sugar on top. And um, examples for such things are, for example, Flight Recorder or Mission Control or Web Start. Uh, I assume you have heard at least of one of those tools. Um, all the three tools were not part of OpenJDK. All the three tools have been developed in at Oracle in closed repositories. There are closed source developed tools and Oracle put them on top on the binaries, which means like if you, for Java 8, just downloaded um, a Java binary on Ubuntu that comes from the Ubuntu repository, for example, or you downloaded, um, I don't know, uh, um, Azure Zulu, Java 8 binary, these tools are not part of the JDKs because only Oracle has them because it's not open source, they developed them closed source. And this is a big problem because when we talk about Java 6, 7, 8, no one knows about something like that, right? Because you download it from Oracle and it's there and yeah, everyone says Java is open, so you assume this is open source, but no. Sadly, it's not. Um, so, uh, yeah, I talked a lot about Oracle. Uh, to be true, Oracle is not the only company who does this. And to be true, it's not forbidden. Because what companies try to do is find points why they can sell support and they, why they can get money by these tools. And Oracle is one of the main contributors to OpenJDK. So don't don't get me wrong. It's not that I that I hate Oracle. Um, but these are some, some problems that are based on not quite good marketing uh, and not very openness of, of Oracle um, when talking about such things. But anyway, um, so as said, others do this too. Azul, for example, has their own garbage collection that they add on top of the OpenJDK builds. So in the Azul binaries, you always have an exclusive Azul garbage collection. Um, okay, um, the good thing is that it has become better because uh, with the new release train, it's much harder to build things that contain such tools and so on and so on. So um, what happened? Oracle contributed a lot of these tools and the sources to the OpenJDK. Examples are Mission Control or Flight Recorder. 
And based on this, the difference of the Oracle JDK and another open JDK build when having a look at JDK or Java 11 is really, really small. I think with Java 11, it was one garbage correction that was part of the Oracle JDK, but has not been contributed to the open JDK starting with Java 12. I think it's, it's the same, which first of all is good, but there's one problem. Some tools have been gone. One example is WebStart. So if you used WebStart, so JNIP, um, this was something that was developed by Oracle that was only part of the Oracle JDK. Oracle canceled it. They don't want it to continue that one. Um, and they have not contributed the sources to the open JDK. Therefore, there was now just no chance to have Java WebStart in Java 11 plus. Um, spoiler, we have a good solution at um, adopt open JDK since some time. I will have a, or we will have a look later at this. Um, okay, so um, that's the introduction for um, the um, open JDK and, and how Java in general is built and, and things like that. And now let's have a look at adopt open JDK because that's um, what I want to talk in general in, in the session, right? And I mean, it's more, half of the time is already gone. So um, let's start with the core topic. And um, before starting, I would like to, to add another poll um, because we talked a lot about um, LTS and uh, that based on um, some changes in, in the open JDK and commitment of companies and so on that we are now able to build LTS versions of Java. And I always ask myself, how important is something like this really to developers? Because I mean, at the end, it should be totally important, right? You Nobody of you would say, uh, I don't care. I just use anything or I, I don't care about security fixes, for example. But it's anyway interesting to see how, how often you, for example, update your Java and, and therefore just the next poll just asks if you really always try to use the updated version or if, yeah, you maybe just update it from time to time once a year, if you do not update um, the Java version on your production system at all and so on. Anything new in the chat? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I assume most of you have voted, so I will close the poll. Yeah, and as you can see, it's interesting, right? I, I, and I'm quite happy that um, you're not lying here because, yeah, even I, I have not all my JDKs updated. It's it's hard to do it, right? I mean, I have several JDKs on on my system since I part of this adopt open JDK team. I have base of JDK, I have Azul JDK, I have Coretto, and so on installed on my machine just to, to test things. And there are a lot of JDKs on my machines that are not updated at all. Um, so I can totally understand that. Um, okay, but let's talk about um, adopt open JDK and what's behind that one and why this is from my point of view so good, important and special. Okay, um, let's start with some history. Um, ah, yeah, this are the um, PDF, so it's no animation, but that's fine. Then we are faster. So here we can see the history of Adopt Open JDK. So um, the history goes back to um, the Java Adoption Group that was founded around 2003. But this was way before George and I was involved into that topic. So we cannot yeah, tell much about that. So let's directly go to the next um, step, that, which is the creation of Get Open JDK from IBM. 
that was the idea to make it easier to work with OpenJDK, to provide build based on OpenJDK, and so on and so on. And um, they created some um, open source tools and, and sources in this Get OpenJDK project. And one year later, um, they donated this to the adoption group that then became Adopt OpenJDK. Um, to, to just have a, a general group for this topic and not a company that is behind it. Um, yeah, the main topic or the, the main issue for this um, community project was to start building Java, learn how to build Java and provide Java binaries. And um, one year later, um, there was already 1 million downloads of Java binaries in 2018. Um, and um, that was quite good. But yeah, as you can see in 2020, we now have over 160 million downloads. I looked yesterday at it, it was 178. So maybe we are now already at over 180 million downloads. Um, so uh, someone has audio, but someone else says audio is fine. Okay. Um, perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, so, and um, based, based on this, on, on this um, high usage of, of the Adopt Open JDK bi uh, um, binaries, um, on the high count of sponsors that we now have in the industry, on the, based on all the things, we decided that it makes sense for Adopt Open JDK to become part of any foundation, legal form, whatever. So we did a lot of discussions and, and earlier this year we announced that Adopt Open JDK will become um, part of the Eclipse Foundation as a top level project. There it will be renamed to, to Adoptium, um, Adopt Open JDK in it's a, a trademark that is held by Oracle. It was allowed for the community project to name it like this, but um, when moving to a foundation. I mean, we not even asked Oracle, we just decided that we want to have everything clear. And so we decided to rename the project to Adoptium. And at the end, everybody that I know talks, don't say Adopt Open JDK, they always say Adopt and with Adoptium, I assume it will stay the same. So that's fine. Um, yeah, that was just the tweet that uh, we go to, to um, the Eclipse Foundation and setting up a working group and a steering committee and so on and so on. Okay, I don't want to go deeper into that one. Um, so let's have a look about the main point of Adopt Open JDK, which is providing business ready binaries. Um, yeah, as said, our binaries are already downloaded over 170 million times. Um, we have um, clear support policies um, that are shown on our website. Everything that we do is open source. Everything that we do is professionally tested as we will see later. And um, all our builds, our tools, our script are backed by, by major vendors of the Java community. Um, yeah, I have a slide at the end that shows some of our um, uh, sponsors and, and team members. And here you have companies like, like Amazon, um, like uh, GoDaddy, like, like Microsoft, like Red Hat, like IBM, like Caracoon on them. Okay, um, we are open and, and transparent. Um, I think that is a quite good point. We Everything that we do as, as far as you can commit it is, is on GitHub. All our builds are on an open Jenkins. We have a Slack, um, um, the technical steering committee is open. So everything there will be recorded and we create uh, documentations of the meetings and so on and so on. Um, yeah, I, we already talked about the down downloads. Um, yeah, to build Java, you need a lot of machines. So we have over 200 dedicated machines. We will have a look how to build Java later. 
And um, we have around 106 GitHub repositories. To be sure, you do not need 106 GitHub repositories to build Java. But as we, we see later, um, Adopt OpenJDK has become a quite large community that now hosts a lot of um, different projects. Um, let me see, there's a question. Are there any plans to support distribution repositories? Yeah. Um, that is something that definitely, so the question was uh, the support of repositories, like the repositories for, for Fedora, Red Hat, CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, and so on. Um, so this is a question that George could definitely answer much better than I can, because that is not my, my topic, this, this Linux specific builds and, and Docker and the Linux repositories. Um, as far as I know, there are a lot of discussions in this area. Um, problem is always that even if it makes sense, even if for a lot of people it will be much better um, from time to time, um, if you just change something, things might break, right? So maybe uh, Ubuntu does something specific. In I mean, it, it starts with um, what Java minus version prints, right? Because it contains the vendor. There are Java system variables at, um, that contains the vendor, for example. And if you change the default Java versions for all these distributions where this value, values are set, for example, to Ubuntu or to something like this, just to adopt OpenJDK, this could end in problems. But um, as I said, there are discussions and things are happening. Um, we see here on the screen, we have 106 GitHub repositories. And since last week, and this is really cool, um, GitHub Actions uses adopt OpenJDK as default for all um, GitHub Actions when Java is involved. So if you create a GitHub Action that needs a JDK, this one will use adopt open JDK by default as long as you do not code something to get a custom JDK. Um, so this is something where we already did it and, and switched the JDK working together with GitHub to adopt open JDK. So I see another question that is related to ICT Web. I will come back to that one later. Um, let's have a look at the builds and binaries. Okay, um, what we see here is the build pipeline of adopt open JDK. And um, yeah, in general, it's it's like that. Uh, we, we get the um, open JDK sources based on a specific branch that is checked out. This will go into our build pipeline and we will build um, a Java binary based on this. Now we're now in the bottom in the build pipeline. What happens afterwards, for this one, we have an entry point. This is a red one, um, approved sort party open JDK binaries so that everything that happens now can not only be used for adopt open JDK binaries, but for any Java binaries. Why this makes sense? Um, because in the test part, we do a lot of stuff, a lot of things that other vendors, for example, don't do. And there are already Java binaries that are not built by adopt open JDK that are tested in our CI based on our test infrastructure. Um, these are the uh, vanilla binaries from Red Hat. So what Red Hat does is they build um, Java binaries based on the OpenJDK without adding anything, without any installers and things like that. It's really based on the upstream of the OpenJDK raw van vanilla binaries. They are hosted at adopt OpenJDK um, so Red Hat do not host them on their own. They are hosted at Adopt Open JDK, and they are built by Red Hat, but then injected into our build pipeline for tests and deployments. Um, everything, yeah, I said everything happens on a Jenkins CI that is open. We will see later some some samples that we can have a look at at the CI, and this is horrible if you click to all. This is so many build jobs, unbelievable. Uh, more than 50% of the build jobs to which I have no idea what they do. <laughs> it's because it's a very big project um, because we support a lot of different platforms. Um, when talking about platforms, first of all, we need to talk about JVMs. Um, when downloading Java from, from Oracle, you normally 
download uh, OpenJDK based um, Java that internally uses Hotspot for JIT. Um, some of you might know that um, IBM created several years ago the OpenJ9 that is a replacement of the Hotspot VM and yeah, can be used to as a Java runtime and provides JIT functionality too. And this OpenJ9 is um, an Eclipse project too. So this was donated by from IBM to Eclipse two or three years ago, something like that. And at Adopt OpenJDK, we do not only build and provide um, hotspot-based binaries, we build and provide OpenJ9 Open binaries too. And we provide them for a lot of different platforms. So most of you know Windows, Mac OS, and uh, yeah, Linux. But we have ARM2, we have um, IEX, uh, yeah, funnily Oracle Spark, Solaris, um, RISC-V, which are like IoT boards, things like that. So a lot of platforms where we build Java binaries. Mostly are built in the cloud uh, for some of the platforms that we have. There is just no cloud, so we really need to build it on, on bare metal. But we use cloud-based infrastructure as much as possible. Um, so the OpenJDK, there is a project at OpenJDK to move the OpenJDK to Git. Um, this has not been done up till now. There are JavaFX, for example, is one of the prototypes where they currently test um, OpenJDK projects in GitHub. Um, the project is called Scarab. That's, that's the name of the OpenJDK project to, to move the OpenJDK to Git. Um, what we have done is we have a mirror in, in GitHub, in the um, Adopt OpenJDK GitHub um, team that mirrors the Mercurial of Adopt OpenJDK, and we just check everything out there to build it. Um, what we do, we do not put sugar like an additional garbage correction, things like that on top of the JDK, but um, we have installers, we do notarization for Mac, so things like that, so that the JDKs that you can download at Adopt Open JDK can easily be used. Okay. Um, oh, one important point um, next to this um, mirror of the Adopt Open JDK sources, we have a repository too that contains all our build scripts. And based on this, you can check out this repository or clone it that contains the build script and with our help and everything is because everything is documented, just build an open JDK binary on your own. You can build, I don't know, Hendrix JDK for Mac, for Linux, for Windows easily. Easiest is Linux because you can build it in Docker. We provide a, a Docker infrastructure that you can use to build OpenJDK in a Docker container so that you do not need to, to set up anything. You just need Docker. And then you have your own J open JDK that you have built. How cool is that? And you can use it to run your mission critical applications based on your JDK. Yeah, you should not do that. Definitely not. Um, because as we've seen um, with the different vendors who tells you that everything works fine with your build, that you did everything right and that there are not any problems. Um, based on this, do not build your own JDK. Do it if you want to learn about it, if you want to see how the open JDK is built, how everything works, but don't use a self-built open JDK in production as long as you are not a big company like, like Amazon or Red Hat and have the money to, to really spend manpower into this topic, learn about it and so on. Um, what we do to provide um, enterprise-ready binaries, we do a lot of tests at Adopt Open JDK. We have a huge test suite that is called Aqua. Um, and this is, again, an open source part or project in Adopt Open JDK. Um, initially, this um, test suite was contributed by, by IBM. Um, and this is a test suite that lets you test Open JDK based binaries or OpenJDK builds. Um, so how many tests do we have? How many do we test? Um, 
as we've seen, we have a lot of platform, Linux, IX, Windows, uh, yeah, Windows 64-bit, uh, 32-bit, and so on. Then we have the hotspot version. We have the OpenJ9 version. To be true for OpenJ9, we have two versions because you can build OpenJ9 with support for Big Heap. Um, so these are three different versions, which means at the end we have about 60 platforms. So there are not all combinations possible, but in general, it's about 60 platforms. Next to this, we do not only build Java 8 and Java 11. Next to this, we build the current um, JDK. We build the, the next JDK that will come out. We build the master and so on. Maybe some early access branches for specific features like Project Valhalla or so on. Um, and for all these builds um, in the night, we, we run 250,000 tests. So this means that um, at Adopt, whenever we do a re release or do the night release, we run 87 7 million tests. Yeah. Um, I assume you, or I think you can assume that we need to run tests in parallel here because otherwise, I assume it would be a monthly and, and not a nightly by, by running that many tests one after each other. And, and this is something where, for example, the um, AquaSuite takes um, care of because what the AquaSuite does it, it provides groups for tests. Uh, currently, there are six different groups, which is OpenJDK, Functional, System, External, Perf, and JCK. And um, these test groups can run in parallel. So when a Java binary is tested, the AquaSuite direct um, starts six processes that will be executed in parallel to take care about this test groups. At the end, the things can happen even on another machine. It's quite complex, but in general, it starts in parallel. And once all the tests are done, the AquaSuite corrects all the test results from all the tests. And yeah, you see if all tests are green or if you have a problem. Um, so six test groups, what do they contain? Um, different kind of tests. Um, the OpenJDK tests are tests, unit integration tests, and so on, that are already part of the OpenJDK repository. Um, functional and system are tests that has been provided initially by, by IBM with the initial provision of um, Aqua to adopt OpenJDK. Um, the test size has grown since then, but the, it's just these two um, groups where functional and system tests for OpenJDK binaries that are not part of the OpenJDK are placed in. Um, the external group is quite nice. Uh, as you can see here, a lot of tests in it, 125,000. So these are not tests that has been written by any Adopt OpenJDK members. Here we use tests of other projects like for example, Tomcat, or the Derby DB. So um, for Tomcat, the sources of the Tomcat, the repository of the Tomcat is checked out and all tests that are part of this repository will be executed against Java binary to check that it runs fine with Tomcat. Next to things like Tomcat, Derby and so on, we integrated five micro profile test compatibility kits um, that will be executed each time to check that they work fine with the binary. Perf contains some benchmarks to test that your binaries are still fast. And the JCK is the group that can be used to um, test your binary against the Oracle Java TCK, which is a commercial TCK that you can use to get certified uh, by Oracle that your binary is based on the Java standard. Um, this will be done for adopt OpenJDK once we moved to Eclipse. Um, but it's already there. Um, since this is 100% open source and other companies can already use it today. And if they have such license, they can use Aqua today and yeah, just use this group two with a running TCK license. Um, so how such tests are working? Here I have an example of an external test um, for DerbyDB. So what the Aqua tool or suit makes in such case is it starts a Docker container, copies 
the JDK binary that should be tested, so the JDK binary that we have built, into the Docker container, installed some build tools, Git, Maven, I don't know, then checks out um, um, Derby from the repository by using the latest stable text that is defined in the a, in a Aqua uh, configuration file. Then it builds Derby and then it runs all of the unit tests of Derby um, and corrects the result of these unit tests. And by doing this for a lot of projects and so on and so on, at the end you will have a lot of test results that will be merged all together to get at the end a result for the Java binary. Um, okay, that's about tests. Um, as I said, we have over 100 um, projects or repositories at adopt open JDK at GitHub. Um, so since we are running out of time, I will just give a short introduction to, to some of them. Um, let's start at the end. Red Hat upstream builds, I already mentioned them. These are the builds that has been done by um, Red Hat that you can download on our page. Aqua is our test suite where we have some repositories for in GitHub where all the sources for Aqua and so on are stored. JDK mission control binary, so we do not have a repository for that, but since Oracle provided it to OpenJDK, we build um, JDK mission control and provide the binaries on our web page for download. JitWatch, JLinks are some additional tools that, that we provide. JitWatch is to analyze hotspot um, at, at runtime and to visualize how the hotspot works. JLink Online is a service that you can use to create custom JLink based build runtimes. And IST Web is an open source replacement of um, Java Web Start um, that was contributed by, by Oracle and is now part of Adopt Open JDK and used by some runtimes um, to provide um, JNLP and Web Start functionality. And this is, for example, used um, as the base of the open source project Open Web Start, which has a full uh, native integration into operation systems and so on, and yeah, provide a rich functionality to, to use um, Java Web Start based applications. Yeah, that's IST Web and Open Web Start. Okay, um, so as I said, at the end, I will give an overview about the technical roadmap and things we are currently working on. Um, one thing which is quite nice is um, our API, and here, let me see if I can give you a sample. Yep. So, oh yeah, um, you should see my Safari browser. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm currently at the adoptopenjdk.net web page. Yeah, just to show you here, you can choose what Java version you want to download. You can download, click on other platforms. Now you have a lot of more options. Um, what version of Java for what platform you want to download. Here you see all the options. Um, these are all the Adopt Open JDK binaries. Next to this here, you can download the Open JDK upstream binaries that are provided by, by Red Hat. Um, so here we do not have that many platforms, um, only the platforms that are provided by, by Red Hat. Um, as said, uh, ci.adoptopenjdk.net is our open source Jenkins with, yeah, as I have said, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of builds. Um, oh yeah, here we see it, 179 million downloads. This is quite nice. This is an open statistic of our downloads. Um, and here you can really have a look like, okay, Okay, let's see Java 8, Java 11. So Java 11 is getting more and more and more. That's really good. And here I can even dive in and have a look. Okay, um, Java 11.0.8. Here we have it. This is the last version um, that was um, released. Yeah. I think one week ago, two weeks ago, I don't know. And here I can now even see like, okay, here's a download for Linux, uh, Mac, uh, Windows, and so on. Um, which is, yeah, at the end, I can just say this is a quite 
quite cool number of downloads. Um, our GitHub repository, as said, or, or GitHub team, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of teams, a lot of repositories. But uh, what I wanted to show you is um, this one, the, the API. Um, so we see a, a Swagger um, front end. If you've never heard about Swagger, this is just a front end that helps you to, to visualize and test REST endpoints. So what we have as the API is the REST API that you can use to download Java binaries by using an API. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, binary um, endpoints, for example, API version three, binary, latest, do, 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 and so on. Um, let's click on this one and do um, try out. And now you already see that here we have a lot of parameters. Now I can specify the parameter. Let's say I want 64 bits. I want to have Java 11, normal heap, JDK, hotspot based for Mac. And I don't want an early access. I want general availability. Um, here I can choose if I want to have it from Adopt Open JDK, so an Adopt Open JDK binary or one of the Red Hat Vanilla binaries and a JDK. And if I click now on execute, he stops with a warning because this would download a file and Swagger says in such case, hey, stop. I don't just simply download something on your machine. But here you see the, the URL. And if I now just copy this URL and put it here, We can see that, yeah, the download starts and we get the latest Java 11 update for Mac. And this is quite, quite helpful. For example, if you set up Docker containers, if you do some CI related stuff, so you do not need to, to uh, download and install um, Java manually, you can automatically do it by, by this API, for example. Okay. Um, that's our, our API. Um, yeah, next to this, um, so I've already mentioned this, that we try to make as much as possible in the cloud. And here we want to become more and more dynamic, which means like we don't want to have bare metal in the cloud. We want to have services that um, are started and, and shut down based on our builds. And yeah, this is where we currently spend a lot of work or a lot of people at Adopt spend a lot of work in to make the builds much, much faster based on this by using uh, Docker, by using containers, um, things like that. So yeah, we work with different cloud providers like uh, Microsoft Azure, for example, together to um, provide all the things that are possible based on containers. It's not 100% possible because as said, we even provide some platforms where there was just no cloud for it. Um, yeah, I, maybe you know this meme. Um, anyway, so as said, we use dynamic infrastructure for our builds and it's getting better and better. Um, and based on this, we can parallelize a lot of things. We can much more easy parallelize all the builds. Um, so, what else? Yeah, we do a redesign on, of the website at the moment. Um, we work on some GitHub actions so that we can externalize several of our builds tabs of our tests as GitHub actions so that it can be even more easily reused by un other JDK vendors by, and so on. Um, JLink Online, I already mentioned that it's a service where you can create custom JLink based um, runtimes. It's a REST on point two, that's quite nice. So you say like, oh, I want to have a Java binary that just have Java run and Java SQL for Mac, Java, and it's Java 11. And then on our server, um, a JLink is started that creates exactly such runtime with this modules and provide it for download. Um, we have a lot of sponsors um, that, yeah, make the work that we do possible because I think a lot of you know that open source is not free. There are people who, who work on it, so you need some, some money. We, here we have a lot of machines involved that we need to pay. 
Um, some companies um, uh, uh, sponsor services for us um, or sponsor cloud infrastructure for us. Um, yeah, but next next to the sponsors, I think another important point is as you have seen us, we have over 150 people in the Adopt Open JDK team. So this is a quite great community. And it's really a lot of people work in this project. A lot of people help to, to get it up and running. Um, and it's yeah just, just cool to be part of, of such a dynamic and, and big open source project. Okay, um, yeah, that was it. I think, yeah, we're more or less in time. Um, yeah, I hope you liked what you've seen. If you have any questions, um, you can ping me on, on Twitter by at Hendrik Ebbers. Uh, you can ping us on Twitter by at Adopt Open JDK. You can ping even George, even if he's not here today, um, at Twitter. We at Adopt have a Slack channel. Um, with a lot of people in it um, where you can ask questions. You can ask me by mail. It's hendrik.ebbers at caracoon.com. If you have any any questions about Adopt Open JDK or, for example, Open Web Start, uh, we at Caracoon um, offer consultancy in, in this area. So if you want to know what Java version you should use, what Java vendor you should use, how much would... Uh, commercial support cost, which one might be the best questions, all these questions in this area, how to update to Java 11 and so on. We provide consultancy there, so you can just ping me in, in such area. Yeah, um, that's it. Um, are there any questions? Let me see. Are there any new? No, there are new, new questions. Oh, there was a question about ICT Web, right? Let me see. For a long time, Project ICT Web has created OpenJDK builds for many Linux distributions. Is there a relationship between ICT Web and Adopt OpenJDK? Okay. Um, yeah, there is a relationship. Um, so as ICT Web is now, so I, you ask about ICT. Ah, okay, got it. Um, no, there is no relationship between ICT and Adopt OpenJDK. So, um, if there are no questions in Q&A, I think I can ask like one or the other question as well in the meantime, sure. until sure. Um, the participants uh, enter their questions. Um, so I wonder, you said um, at Adopt, you're like around 150 people working for the project. Yeah. How do you organize? Um, how are we organized? So um, we organized like that. So first of all, we have the TSC, which is the steering committee that in general, this, so that discuss important points, important issues. So from time to time, we label issues, for example, in the GitHub repositories as uh, TSC relevant so that we can um, discuss them in the TSC. Next to this, there are a lot of additional groups next to the TSC for specific areas, like, for example, for the test suite, there's a group and they do weekly meetings, for example. Uh, so in for in our Slack, they have a group and, and they just do weekly calls. We have a security group that, that does the same, that takes care that um, the adopt builds are secure and that really all secure fixes has been merged in the open JDK before we do any build at all. Things like that. We have a build group, which does the same. So we have like topic oriented groups and the TCK where, uh, yeah, I would say from all these groups, people are in the TCK to, to put it all together. Um, and I mean, it's open source, it's at GitHub. Um, we have the Slack channel to, to ask questions from time to time, even in the Slack channel, we just do in the general set, uh, uh, in the general channel, um, a call so that people can ask questions about Adopt Open JDK, can, uh, we give them information how they can start to, to work with Adopt Open JDK. One thing I'm currently working on, um, there is not so much online at the moment. I did some, uh, some small tests to see how it behaves. This, um, how can we define good first issues? So what do we need to do to get really people who are not um, in OpenJDK or even 
who are not into open source to work on on issues because we have a lot so i've started uh, at open jdk uh, or at adopt open jdk by doing the german translation of the page and please now do not check the page in german because it's it's horrible so much text has changed that it don't fit at all anymore but this was for example one of the first things i did um because there was such issue and i just tried it out um so when well, we're talking about it let me um, start the last poll. Uh, I'm totally missed to do that one. Um, that just asks if you are already using Adopt Open JDK. I find I find this question quite interesting because um, I accidentally found out that we are using Adopt Open JDK, and accidentally because we were using um, Elasticsearch yeah. Dockerized, and I was actually finding out. Adopt Open JDK is running inside the container. So how do you, how did you get manage that to get into this? And that actually Elastic is using you as the even like in the official containers you as a as a primary source because um, it's quite nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, so so I think one point why this is doable at all is that uh, we as as a uh, as a, a community one of the most important points for us the last years was to really have free ATS support for java so that people i mean for huge companies it's fine to to pay support to oracle or to azure or something like that but especially if you are a startup you want to you cannot pay something like that you want to to have your infrastructure secure and um, we want that they use Java and not not JS, for example. So um, that was a, a main concern where we invested a lot. And at the end, happily, it worked out with like um, um, Red Hat doing all those fixes in the open. And I think based based on on this work that that we did and and based on the openness that we try to have. Um, companies or, or tools or, or frameworks like, for example, Elastic, trust us and, and believe that um, Adopt is the best choice if you want to have LTS support as long as possible for free. Because next to, to Adopt, you I mean, you can download um, Amazon Coretto, for example, and I wouldn't say that it's wrong to download Amazon Coretto, but here it's not everything open source and um, so Amazon, if they want, they can tomorrow say, okay, we stop this project. There won't be any update for Coretto 11 or Java or Coretto 8 anymore, right? That is what a company can do. And when you have a look at, at Google and, and the JavaScript frameworks of Google with Angular and things like that, you know that, that companies do things like that when they are not interested anymore, especially big companies. And I think that is one of the points uh, that makes um, adopt open JDK that attractive. And the other thing I found out actually was, for example, Microsoft with Azure Cloud is using also adopt open JDK, as you said, with GitHub Actions. Yeah. And um, VMware Tanzu with Cloud Foundry is also using this. And they're also supporter, actually, also, I think, even like helping backporting fixes. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that's... yeah. Microsoft is doing, I mean, George. George could talk a lot about this topic because he's Java manager at Microsoft. Um, but but Microsoft uh, in the last years invested a lot in this topic, especially since one year in, into the Java topic where Microsoft really is building up a quite good um, Java team that really helps to bring the open JDK and next to this adopt open JDK because yeah, they are main sponsor with George, for example, one of the founders of Adopt Open JDK is now working at Microsoft. Um, so it's Adopt Open JDK is not Microsoft driven. It's uh, uh, we have roots that not like the whole TCK can be from Microsoft. And even that will be harder when we go to, to Eclipse because then in, in the Eclipse charter, there will be roots to, to target things like that, that it can be just one company that um, takes mm -hmm. care about Java being free, yeah. So there was another question actually from Thomas in the Q&A. 
and he asked if if he wants to start contributing to adopt open JDK, what would be a good starting point? What is yeah. like the place where you need to go, like read the resources? So yeah, um, as, as said, um, this is um, something where I currently work on. Um, so what we have or what I'm currently doing, but, but this is as said, uh, in progress at the moment. Let me check. So you yeah, you see my my uh, you see GitHub right. So what I'm currently working on first of all is a good first issues project um, where we try to um, identify good first issues and then describe those issues. So if you go now into this, the issues that are here are not good first issues. Definitely not because when I go into this one, you will find here this. A description where if you are not into this topic, you have no idea what to do. Um, so based based on this, um, one of the goals is where I'm currently working on is to provide templates and things like that. How a good first issue needs to be look like. So what does it need to contain? How the description must look like, and um, to to make it easy for people to to get into that. Um, if we go to IST web and go to the closed issues, there is one of those issues where I just tested it out. Here we go. And this already worked because I did it like five days ago. And one day later, there was a person who never did something at GitHub and says, Hey, can I take care of this issue? Um, so it looks like it, it works quite well at the moment. And here I'm, I'm trying to, you know, play with how should an issue be structured so that it's attractive to people and that people easily understand what to do. Maybe you say now, okay, with all these emojis, this is not my style, but yeah, we, we try to figure it out, right? What what do we need to do that, that people come to us and, and like to work on this because we remove all the, the hurdles that you normally have, like how do I fork the project? How do I do this and that and that? Um, yeah, so it's in progress and it's getting better. That's really nice. So Thank actually, you. like also other um, other companies using this um, good first issues as well, or other open source projects, it's nice. So also, do you participate in Hacktoberfest? Yeah, we want to do that too. But so the, for me, it's it's one thing is important because having this good first issue tech, it, it's first of all, it's just a tech. And as said, uh, we have several issues at Adopt that are tagged with good first issue. And if you see the issue, you have absolutely no idea what, what the, you, you need to know. You must be deep into the Open JDK to understand that issue. And um, this is where I'm currently um, working on as part of the TCK. So this is, for example, something that the TCK takes care of um, to we identify the good first issues and identify how we need to describe them. And at the end, maybe we go into the Hacktoberfest and have only 10 good first issues instead mm -hmm. of at the moment, maybe there are 40 or 50 that are tagged with good first issues. But then these 10 issues are really good first issues that someone can pick and, and really work on it without having deep Java knowledge, without having deep open JDK knowledge, without even having deep Git knowledge or, or knowledge about how open source works. That's the goal that, yeah, I want to have work on to Oktoberfest. And and maybe a last question, because you said Karakun is based in Basel, and I know yeah. there is actually also Hacker Gardens in Basel. Yeah. Are maybe some of your colleagues also contributing to Adopt Open JDK, and you could sit together with them actually at, at the Hacker Garden? Yeah. Um, that, that's a good idea. Um, regarding Hacker Garden, we currently, based on the uh, yeah, Corona situation, thinking about how how we behave with Hacker Garden. Maybe there will be an, an online Hacker Garden in the future because I know the people who who uh, do the Hacker Garden, but we will see. Um, regarding um, Adopt Open JDK, yes, there are some other people at uh, Karakun who work on Adopt Open JDK because we as a company want 
to help other companies with, with Java to understand what Java version they should use, what OpenJDK is, and so on and so on. And based on this, it makes just or it's important that that people from from Karakun work on um, on OpenJDK or or adopt or something like like JSRs. So I think at um, adopt we currently have four people that will be committing to to adopt OpenJDK from Karakun. So um, Marcus just mentioned in the chat that even um, somebody in Attacker Garden in Lutern is um, familiar with the process and also contributing to adopt OpenJDK. Ah, so cool. that's maybe also a good starting point. That's cool. Is it, is it Andreas, Marcus, or who, who is it? Ah, yeah, we have the 15 seconds delay, right? <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. Ma yeah, sure. Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Nice. So I think actually we should come to an end. Um, it was really great having you. And I would also love to say thank you to some other people who were involved in this. So also like thank you participants for actually asking questions and trying to be interactive with us. And as also, as always, we need to thank the, the, sp uh, the sponsors of the Java user group who make this um, events possible. And especially, I want to say thank you for um, Ursula, which was setting up the whole event um, just before going for vacation, and then even supporting us during actually her vacation, and then also Marcus um, in the back um, taking care of all the technical things. So thank you very much, all of you. You helped us to make this event successful. And just um, take care. Have a look at the feedback. You will just be forwarded very soon when we finish the webinar to the feedback form. Fill out the feedback form, please. And you might get a chance to win an IntelliJ license and you will be also announced um, on our Twitter channel for sure. So thank you very much, Henrik, for the talk and also the discussion. And as soon as we end the talk, will just disappear, all of you. So we, we can't say goodbye anymore. So okay. then, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.